an explosion in the silver price and the gold price. Will we see that in 2024? Hold on one second. Because have you heard there's a big news story going around, especially with the people like us that are into silver and gold that like to read between the lines, a big, big story that has to do with the banks and the Fed. And I believe if we take a deeper look at what's going on, could indicate that we could be in for an environment that will result in extreme moves in the silver price and the gold price. We're going to talk about that, okay? It's the big bank term funding program, but there's something that nobody else is talking about. This is breaking news, and I'm going to share it with you in this video. But we're also going to talk about a billionaire. Yeah, billionaire a billionaire who said something very interesting about precious metals. And uh, we're going to talk about the world's biggest silver miner. What are they saying about silver? Whoa, thank you, Sooner Bear. God is good. But his grace spread to all my newfound friends. Thank you, Sooner Bear. That's a very nice super chat. Susie and I were at a wedding last night, and there was a song, and I said, I'm going to sing this, because they had us all sing along in the live stream. And she took the piece of paper out of my hand and threw it away. So nonetheless, thank you. Thank you for that kind super chat. Thank you for that kind message. Billionaires talking about bullion? Yeah. What about Baker? Phillips Baker. You know who he is? Phillips? I never could really understand who would name their kid Phillips. <laughs> is there like two of them? Anyway, he's the CEO of Hecla, Hecla Mining, America's biggest silver mining company, the, the America's oldest silver mining company. He's got something for us, but let's not mess around today, okay? Let's get right to the situation that I think could be an absolute bomb in a good way for the silver price and the gold price, okay? That, that nobody's talking. Now, everybody's talking. All right, let's, I'm going to go through this step by step with you, okay? Okay, first off, let's recognize, my fellow basement dwellers, that we have been through the valley of doom for the last few years with the silver price and the gold price. The Fed was not our friend. The Fed, the dollar went up in value, interest rates went up, blah, 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 okay? Uh, but... Things are changing, and there's this breaking news I'm going to give you within the next three minutes that I think, when we put it all together, could spell awesomeness for the silver and gold community. I really do. I think you're, I think we could be in for some great, great times, okay? But let's also lay the groundwork that in December, the Fed pivoted, okay? The Fed changed their tune. The tide turned. The uh, new paradigm, right? A new environment, a new weather pattern, whatever. The wind is kind of, sort of in our sails. Not completely yet. That's not the breaking news, but that did happen. And let's also recognize the Fed has stopped raising interest rates. Now, we got a big meeting this week. I'm going to talk about a big surprise that we might, and I'll emphasize, might get. Please don't make any financial decisions based upon my keen insights, just my opinions. You form your own opinions. Also, I'm not responsible for decisions like getting engaged or adopting puppies, but nonetheless, let's talk about what could be one of the biggest stories of the year. The slight possibility that they actually cut rates next week at the Fed meeting. Why would you say that? I want you to think about something. What's the biggest story out there in the precious metals community right now? It's the fact that the Fed announced last week that they're going to stop the bank term funding program. That was the bailout program they put in place last year to bail out the banks because the banks... They, all the treasuries they owned were in the toilet. So if everybody showed up and wanted their money from the bank, the bank wouldn't have the money because the treasuries were down. All right? That's the situation. Now the Fed surprised everyone by announcing they're ending the program. Everybody said, oh, they're going to have to extend it. They're going to No, they shocked us. That's not the breaking news. But they did shock us in saying, we're going to end the bank term funding program. This is, this is it, guys. This is the breaking news. And I think this is something that I haven't heard anybody else talk about. We're going to talk about it. I want you to think about it. Send me an email. Tell me if you agree or disagree. 
But think about this. If the Fed was not going to lower rates aggressively, they would have extended that program. They would have continued to give the banks relief. But if the Fed knows that they're either going to lower rates sooner, maybe next week, or in a more aggressive manner than the market is anticipating already, right? If they didn't know that they were going to do that, they know they're going to do that. So they know we can take away this bailout program, the BTFP, which they've announced they're taking away. We can take away this relief program. I mean, put it together. Andy Sheckman always says, you got to look at all the crumbs that are out there. I, I pose this question. If the Fed thought they were going to continue to be aggressive or tighter with monetary policy, which is bad for the silver price and gold price, they wouldn't be pulling their bailout program, their relief program. But since they are pulling it, that indicates to me that they do plan on aggressively and possibly sooner lowering rates. And when they lower rates, that'll make the dollar go down. That'll make the value of silver and gold go way, way up. Okay. All right. And on top of that, that will give the banks some relief. Lower, lower interest rates will make the value of their bonds go up. So they don't need the bailout. It's, it's something that I've not heard. Everybody's talking about, oh, they're taking away the BTFP. They're taking away the bank relief program. It's going to be it's going to be Armageddon on March 12th, right? Oh, the banks are, and, and I agree, it's not a good situation, but I think we need to take a little bit deeper look. And I know, right, we are the type people, we go deeper than even the deepest general bear. We dive into the real deep end of the pool and we're looking at this and we're thinking, why, what would the Fed be thinking? What's the crumb that we can garner, the clue? that we can garner from that information. Let's do the bell, bell warning. Okay, 10 rings of the bell. Thank you for that super chat. Super chats are highly encouraged. <laughs> Never expected, but always much appreciated. They go a long way to help support the channel. Please give this a thumbs up when we get to 200. I'll ring the cowbell. When we get to 300, I'll ring the gong. You know the story. Guys, we could be moving into a year where everything changes. Why else would the Fed, I'm going to say it one more time, breaking news. Why else? I ask you that question. Would the Fed be taking away the relief program, the bailout program, if they didn't know that the banks were going to be in better shape because the Fed knows they're going to be lowering interest rates? You know, come on, man. <laughs> All right. The other thing we know about the Fed, now you may ask yourself, you may say, well, no, the Fed says this, the Fed says, I want you to, I want you to, um, to just, just take a deep breath. Maybe I need to take a deep breath, take a step back. And this is something else that we need to accept and we need to realize, right? The Fed, we could see much more aggressive interest rate cuts this year. Again, interest rate cuts, are rocket fuel for the silver price and the gold price. But, but we're all, everybody's like, whoa, whoa, but the Fed said this, the Fed said that. Take a step back and bear this in mind. <laughs> My dad always says that. Bear this in mind, son. Bear this in mind. We just wrapped up what was a interest rate hike cycle that far exceeded anyone's expectations in terms of severity and the length of time that it has lasted. I remember two summers ago, people saying, oh, the Fed's going to raise rates one time and they're going to have to cut. Well, no, the Fed, you know what happened. So what does that tell us about going forward? The Fed, the Fed, I mean, the Fed told us they weren't going to raise rates until right now, three years ago, and they wound up raising them most aggressively uh, and quicker than anyone could have ever imagined. What's to keep the inverse from happening, the opposite from happening? I hate when people use big words that I don't understand. Inverse means opposite, right? Right? We guys, it it could it could be real, baby. And is this cancellation of the bank? bailout program, the BTFP, 
right? That relief program, is that the big clue that we needed right now to know that the Fed really plans on cutting interest rates much sooner and much more aggressively? Let's consult the expert. What do you say? We haven't had him out for like two weeks. Don't forget about this. This is the magic box. This poor guy is in a box. He's got a recession on one side uh, and inflation on the other. Hey, we just got a super chat from Metal Sear or the Fed has some other new program up its sleeve. Great point, Metal Sear. We'll, we'll touch on that as well. Okay, but let's talk, let's talk to the expert. Huh? The king of smoke and mirrors, DJ Jerome Powell. There he is. Are you going to cut rates aggressively this year, Jerome? Huh? Well, you'll just have to wait and find out. All right. Up, 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 up. Put him away. You can slide silver coins in there, uh, and it drives him crazy. Metal Seer brings up a valid point. Will they just come up with a new acronym? Uh, we'll get rid of the BTFP, and we'll start the ABCFR, whatever they're going to call it, right? That's a possibility. The reality of the situation is quite simple, guys. No matter what happens, because of the laws of mathematics, it's going to be a situation where they're going to print money, right? And when they print money, when they dilute the dollar further, there's no other way around it, right? When they, when they dissolve the value of the dollar, that will continue to be supportive for the gold price and the silver price. Have you looked at the gold price lately? Let me give you a little, a little uh, statistic. Gold has closed above $2,000, according to what I saw, like 11 out of the last 12 weeks or 12 out of the last 13. You know, it's hard to count on the computer screen. You know what I'm talking about. Some people are saying gold closed. I don't know if they're looking at spot futures, whatever, but a lot of people are saying gold has closed above 10, or, I'm sorry, 2,000 for the last 10 weeks straight, right? We have built a base. Next week right now, unfortunately, I could be sitting here, right? Especially with this being a Fed week, right? I could be dead wrong. I'm just saying, I don't think that we're giving enough uh, uh, weight to the possibility that this week when the Fed talks, that uh, number one, they could be more dovish. Number two, we could get shocked with an interest rate cut. Now, they could also come out and be hawkish. Some people might say, well, the stock market's at an all-time high, the S&P. And so the Fed may want to tamp down the exuberance that we have in the stock market. But what else is keeping the economy going? I mean, if you're part of the one richest 1%, Right, that's what's keeping the economy going because they're like looking at their 401ks and their brokerage accounts saying, Hey, I'm rich, I'm rich. So, we could get a bit of a hawkish shock too this week, right? And I could be sitting here next Sunday, right? Remember, right? This is not financial advice, this is relationship advice, and I'll give you a good piece of relationship advice in just one second. Uh, but we could be sitting here next week with $20 and 20, $20, 20 cents silver. I will be depressed, okay? Oh, yeah. You know, I get sad occasionally. Once every month or so, I cry. Uh, or we could be sitting here with 1934, so our gold, right? I don't think that's going to happen, but it's within the realm of possibilities. We have to be trepidatious. Trepidatious. Do you know what that word means? Right? We, all, we always like to expand our minds. So I'm at this wedding reception last night with Susie sitting there, and they're doing all their speeches. And one of them, I'm half paying attention, half thinking about silver and gold. And you, right? <laughs> Basement dwellers. Anyway, they're giving the speech, and the, I hear this word trepidatious. I'm like, trepidatious? What does that mean? I know I've heard that word a lot, but I really don't know what it means. And I looked at Susie, and I said, what does trepidatious mean? And she kind of looked at, she didn't even have to say it. She just looked at me and I could hear what she was thinking. Like, are you stupid? <laughs> and she said, cautious. And then she looked at me with that look like, does that make sense? I said, that's what I thought, Susie. We need to be trepidatious as we move through the year, right? We don't put all of our money into one thing. 
right? I'm I'm not the king of uh, diversification. I'm not giving financial advice. We don't, but we don't want to pile all of our money into one thing, right? We want to pay off debt. We want to be in good financial shape. Now, if you do, if you make the decision on your own that you want to buy some silver, gold, or platinum. I think there's one company that checks all the boxes. And as a matter of fact, I've got a box right there with their name on it. Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. I won't sing the name today, but I love Pimbex. I love to say the name, but what I love most about Pimbex, because I've worked with them before they sponsored the channel, right? And what I found out was their prices are always the best for the exact same thing. Royal, Royal Canadian Mint 10 ounce bars, American Silver Eagles, it's all the same thing, sold by all the big online bullion dealers. But these, these guys, these brothers that run the company, they pride themselves in having the best prices, the best service, and great selection. So I'm never telling you what to do. I'm just recommending, you may want to consider See, I'm not using the S word, should. No, I'm saying you may just be, might be a wise decision for you to consider next time you're looking to buy bullion online. Check out Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. And if you ever want to do a little conversion of an IRA, talk to them as well, because you always want to get more metal for your money. Ta-da! All right, let's move on. No, let's not move on. We're going to talk about the biggest bubble in the history of the world. We're going to talk about a billionaire, but let's wrap up on this Fed stuff, okay? I got all these notes and I don't even read them. I should read this to you here, okay? Uh, number five, we could get even more. I wrote this. I'm giving credit to the author. <laughs> we could get even more aggressive rate cuts than what the market expects. Don't forget, we already been through the most aggressive rate hike, okay? Oh, this would play, right? If they shocked us on Wednesday with a rate cut, right? <laughs> hey, then we could be next Sunday sitting here talking about 2150 gold, right? $28 silver, who knows? But don't forget, it's an election year, right? And old Joe Biden, you know, we would never consider that Joe Biden would do anything to juice the economy. Put the screws to old Jerome, right? Remember, Jerome's in a box, right? He, you know, he's uh, not that there'd be any political influence over the Fed. They're not part of the government. Don't forget that. The Fed and Federal Reserve is no more federal than the Federal and Federal Express. But nonetheless, hey, that all rhymed. Nonetheless, maybe, just maybe, we need to bear, we need to consider that it's an election year, okay? And in election years, for some magical reason, coincidence, right? It's just a coincidence. The economy tends to get juiced, right? They try to do things to keep oil down. They try to do things to juice the economy. Speaking about oil, think about this. Think about this. Oil, it's crazy, the oil prices. If you, if right, one year ago, right now, you and I were talking and we had a crystal ball and we said, hey, a year from now, there's going to be a major war in the Middle East. And we're not in favor of war. We're not, you know, we're just observing what's going on. And I said, I went a year in the future and there's a war in the Middle East, a big, and I told you the details of what's going on, right? Ships getting bombed in the Red Sea and all that bad, nasty stuff that's going on. We would have bet the farm. I'd, I'd be bankrupt right now because if I'd known a year ago exactly what would be going on right now, I would have bet the farm that we would have oil at $150, $200 a barrel. And oil's down low. I mean, it makes no sense. That's why sometimes we got to be careful. That's why we can be wrong, even if we did have a crystal ball. <laughs> Our crystal ball didn't tell us that the oil price would be, I mean, it's crazy, okay? It's very crazy where the oil price is right now. I'm sorry, I digress. It is an election year. It is 2024. Let's, let's continue to bear that in mind. And it's a big deal right now that you are here when you're with me. I'm sorry, but you're a basement dweller. That means you're smarter than the average bear. <laughs> you're a caring person. You're a kind person, you're a generous person, 
and you're the most important person here. So thank you for being here. Please don't forget to give this a thumbs up. When we get to 200 thumbs up, I will ring the cowbell, and that's going to happen here real soon. So for those of you that don't like bells, it's a time to turn your volume down. All right, let's, figure, let's wrap it up here. Uh, oh, in regards to this situation where we could get higher or lower interest rates next week, we're just looking at all this just looking at how messed up the United States is, okay, 34 trillion in debt, two trillion debt, you know, that whole rigmarole. We're not even we're not even considering those geopolitical factors, the BRICS, the BRICS plus, the de-dollarization, the wars going on. The fact that we are living right now, yes, you and me, Buttercup, through a period of time that is experiencing change like nothing any of us have ever been through. So that could be another major factor, a geopolitical event, black swans, right? That could massively require the Fed on top of what they're already going to have to do because the United States alone has put themselves in such a screwy position, but geopolitical events could provide even more reason for the, uh, for the, for the market to go down. Thank you, Metal Seer. Here, guys, let's, 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 because we want to be accurate. Metal, Metal Seer has, uh, has given us the, uh, the uh, official, the official, oh, I clicked on it. Hold on. Per Webster, trepidatious means apprehensive. Mr. Ron's English class. Yes, thank you, my friend. Oh, we got to ring the bell. I knew there was something. Let's all have a sip of coffee, and then I'm going to, I'll ring the bell, and then we're going to move on to the biggest bubble in the history of the world, and a billionaire, and Phillips Baker. We got a lot of fun to have here today, and we got football later. Life is good. Hey, there's the Kansas City Chiefs. I live in Missouri. For those of you who don't like bells, okay, all right, no more bells, no mas, no mas, no mas. Uh, okay, let's talk about bubbles. Here, I wrote this. I'm going to read it to you. This is for you, okay? I sincerely believe that we're living through one of the biggest bubbles in the history of the world right now. Bond bubble, stock bubble, real estate bubbles, bubbles, bubbles everywhere. Bitcoin bubbles. <laughs> I'm not a Bitcoin hater, but there's a Bitcoin bubble floating around, right? These have happened in the past. The guys, everything that we are experiencing right now, what you are experiencing feels so real to you, right? Because that's what we're experiencing. I'm 53 years and 11 months old. Right? It's all I know is what I've experienced. It's what has come into this brain. That's what you know as well. It feels real. The real estate bubble that we're in right now doesn't really feel like a real estate bubble. If it is indeed a bubble, I could be wrong. But the stock market bubble, if it's a bubble, right? If the price of Apple computer, if the price of NVIDIA, if the price of a lot of these stocks is indeed a bubble, although they are based upon traditional metrics, but nonetheless, it doesn't feel like a bubble because it just keeps going up and up and up and up. If the bonds were in a bubble, although that bubble kind of got a little bit of a prick, of, we are in the biggest bubble, bubbles, bubbles, Bitcoin bubbles, right? Bubbles everywhere. It's not going to feel like it, okay? And they've happened in the past. Holland had the tulip mania bubble, right? People that were living during that time thought that tulip bulbs were worth astronomical amounts of money. But even more important, there was a bubble called the Mississippi Company in France. And this is interesting because it has to do with gold and silver as well. I'm going to read this to you in super speed. But the Mississippi Company was a big bubble in France, I don't know, 300 years ago? But listen to this very quickly. Super speed. The Mississippi Company... Uh, founded in 1684, uh, named the company from the West, blah, blah, blah. It was the company, okay. It was a corporation holding a business monopoly in French colonies in North America and the West Indies. In 1717, the Mississippi Company received a royal grant and exclusive trading rights for 25 years. They had a monopoly. The rise and fall of the company is connected with the activities of the Scottish financier and economist John Law. 
all right? Okay, who was then the controller general for the uh, country of France. Through the company, though the company itself started to become profitable, it, be, it was a profitable company and remained solvent until the collapse of the bubble when speculation in French financial circles and land development in the region became frenzied and detached from economic reality, the Mississippi bubble became one of the earliest examples of an economic stock market bubble. This is where it gets interesting. In France, the wealth of Louisiana, that's the state of Louisiana here in Missouri, or in Missouri, in the United States, was exaggerated in a marketing scheme for the newly formed Mississippi Company. And, the, and its value temporarily soared to the equivalent of $6.5 trillion. This one company, okay, in France, in what, 17, whatever, 20 or something like that, got to the value in equivalent money today of $6.5 trillion. I think Microsoft and Apple, they're like $3 trillion, okay, right now, which would make it the second most valuable company in history behind the Dutch East India Company, which probably had something to do with the tulip mania. <clears throat> this is where it's interesting. The operations of the company had a profound effect on the global balance of trade. This is where they talk about gold and silver. Almost single-handedly, it reversed the eastward drain of Western bullion, which had been in effect since the Roman time. So the point here, guys, is if we are in a bubble, a stock market bubble, a bond market bubble, a real estate bubble, a Bitcoin bubble, or whatever, there's more bubbles. There's bubbles everywhere, right? It may, we're not, we don't feel it. Those people, they didn't feel it until it popped, okay? Now, I could be dead wrong. Maybe we're in a new paradigm, whatever. But isn't it interesting that that company that became a bubble was, number one, profitable, and number two, uh, uh, the, uh, not much bigger than what we're seeing now in current dollar amounts than what we have in market caps of companies like Microsoft, companies like Apple, Computer. Okay, I'm not anti Apple or anything like that. I just, when I look at that stock and say, well, they've got about $2 per share in assets and the rest is all intellectual property and future la la growth. I don't know. Okay, look, I was wrong about Apple stock 10 years ago. Nonetheless, what you want to hear about a, a billionaire who's talking about bullion? Do you know, you need to know. I'm going to help. I'm going to, I'll give you a recommendation. You may benefit from learning about a guy named Jeffrey Gunlock. He's the new bond king. He's the founder of Double Line Capital. He's a billionaire. He is, of all the people that you'll ever see on CNBC or Fox Business or anything like that, he's the real deal. He tells it like it is. He knows that mathematically the United States is done, Okay are in a very, very difficult situation, right? D big trouble. But here's what he recently said. Billionaire hedge fund manager Jeffrey Gunlock said he'd consider cash and gold as financial markets display increasingly grabby behavior by investors. Thank you, Jeffrey Gunlock. In an interview he, that he posted Thursday, Double Line Capital founder Gunlock explained that momentum had been driving a bond rebound and fresh records for the S&P 500 as opposed to soft landing risk. Wow, thank you, Metal Seer. <laughs> Uh, he says, uh, right, Ron, Magnificent Seven are not that sound. Yeah, it's they are not that sound. They are not that sound, but they are what they are. And you know what? People that put their money in the Magnificent Seven over the last 10 years did a heck of a lot better than I did because I put a lot of my money into precious metal mining stocks. Who knows how that'll play out over the next 10 years, right? I mean, I could be, again, I could be broadcasting to you live from Ron's recreational vehicle. <laughs> Don't forget, Coin Shop, Chris and I are going on a world tour to come visit you in our RV that's going to be uh, painted half silver on one side, half gold on the other. All right, we're going to get some sponsors. Speaking of sponsors, let's say thank you to Fortuna Silver, silver mining, but now they actually produce a lot more 
gold. Solid financial condition. I think the best management team in the mining production arena right now, Jorge Ganoza, for almost 20 years, they've grown this company. 15 years ago, they were producing the equivalent of 50,000 ounces of gold per year. Today, right, Projections for 2024, they could approach 500,000 ounces of gold equivalent. Most of that will be gold because they've pivoted to more gold production. Because let's face it, guys, like we've talked about in the past with these manipulated crazy silver prices, it's just not as profitable to mine silver as opposed to gold. I mean, look at the moves that Jorge made with Fortuna over the last five years, right? Uh, he bought rocks gold in West Africa. Now we got the Seguela mine uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, <laughs> that is like exceeding everyone's expectation. They're running more ore through the mill. The ore they're running through the mill has more gold in it than they anticipated. And they have some unbelievable exploration. They have a big land package around it. And they have a mine in Burkina Faso. And they just bought a big new project in uh, 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 Senegal, uh, the Diambasud project, which is like an advanced stage exploration development level project where they're doing more and more and more drilling. I'll be talking to Jorge this week. What a great guy. Um, you know, he's done well for the company, positioned the company to really harvest great gains, especially if we get much higher precious metal prices. Thank you, Fortuna, for sponsoring The Basement. You can check them out at fortunasilver.com. Don't make any investment decisions based on anything I say. Do your own work. Remember, anything you invest in is risky, okay? Let me, uh, give me a break here. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Let's talk about Phillips Baker. Have you heard of Hecla Mining? The world's, I don't know, the world's, maybe not the world's, America's oldest and biggest silver producer. Based in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And Phillips Baker had something very interesting to say about silver. Bear with me. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Sorry. Hold on just one second while I pull up the article. Up, 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 uh, here it is. This is on Kitco. Phyllis Baker says we are actively looking for opportunities as they look to the south. Um, ba, ba, ba. Hold on here. Uh, Baker said the company is also looking at expanding into Latin America because, guys, you can't find silver anymore. Silver is becoming more and more difficult to find. He said, we recognize for us to grow quicker, we need to be in either Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, or Argentina. So we're actively looking in those jurisdictions. Asked about, his, this, is the, this is the meat, asked about silver as a critical mineral. Baker pointed out that the Energy Information Agency recently came out with a report saying that 75% of installed renewable energy in 2023 was solar, about 350 gigawatts, which implies almost 190 million ounces of silver. That's 25% of the world's silver production. Coin Shop Chris says, I missed the super chat. Hold on. Hold on here. See if I can find it. Crafty Stacker, thank you for the super chat. Cup of coffee. I appreciate that, my friend. You guys, these super chats are super appreciated. Did I say that already? Not expected. Always appreciated. Please only give what you can afford. And it, but you know, it is much appreciated. The content here will always be free. Free, 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 free. I have nothing against anyone who has a Patreon or a subscription, but absolutely will always be free. Any donations, some people send silver. Uh, here, look what somebody sent us yesterday. Oh, man. And then we're going to get back to the baker. But look what somebody sent us yesterday. Peace dollars. I couldn't remember what these are. I absolutely love these peace dollars. They were from Kimberly. 1925. Look at that. Let me see if I can get the shine on it. 
I like when it shines in the light. See that? Look at that's silver. That's why it's in solar panels, because it's the most reflective metal on the face of the earth. Okay? Right? Remember that, guys. That's why it's in solar panels. If I hooked an electrical wire to one side and one to the other side, 100% of the electricity. It's the metal by which electric conductivity is measured. That's why you find it in all the new electronics. That's why it's in the most advanced microchips that will power the artificial intelligence revolution. That's why there's 500 of these ounces, although that's not a full ounce. What is it? 0.715, but you know what I'm saying. So there's about 600 of these ounces in the head of each Tomahawk missile. All right, that's like now common knowledge, okay? Um, yeah, that's why if you were a rich kid back in the day, oh, it's upside down. If you were a rich kid back in the day, you had a spoon made out of this because silver's also antimicrobial. That's why it's used in a lot of high-end surgical equipment. That's why they actually sew silver fibers I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think this shirt has any silver in it. But they do sew silver fibers into the gowns of surgeons because it's antimicrobial. All right. Anyway, oh, here. If you want to get two of these and a lot more, let me show you real quickly. <clears throat> All of this, yes, I am going to return this tray to Wendy's. Anyway, all of this silver that we have here, 25 ounces. Could be yours on Valentine's Day. There's a giveaway. Uh, there's a link in the description of this and every video where you can enter the Valentine's Day giveaway. Just look to where it says enter Valentine's Day giveaway. Follow the directions. It'll take you about four minutes. There's no obligation. There's no uh, giving any personal information, right? We're going to pick a random comment from the giveaway video. We've been doing this with all the other giveaways. It works great. And on Valentine's Day, my little sweetheart, you, you could get 25 ounces of silver and I'll ship it out immediately. And then when you get it, you can take a selfie and I'll put your cute face with all your new silver on the community page of Ron's Basement. I mean, what else could a guy or gal ask for? I tell you, my generosity never ends. Actually, all that silver, boy, I probably got to throw it. I it was donated. So Jim M gave us five ounces. Pimbex gave us 10 ounces. Uh, oh boy, Kimberly gave us two ounces. Coin Shop Chris gave us two ounces. I got another super chat, Americans first. I've got over... 2,000 troy ounces of silver. Keep on going, baby. Yeah, that's interesting. Good for you. Who else gave? Somebody, anybody I forgot. Or let me look real quick. Okay, Jim M, uh, Jim B, Pimbex, Coin Shop Chris, and Kimberly. Five people, five people donated silver. All right? I mean, what a happy. Okay, 2,000 ounces of silver. That's a lot. Uh, did you know? Did you know that in India, India, the country of India, I'm going to talk about that next. I get in trouble. I get ripped because I don't stay on track. So I'm going to get back on the Phillips Baker track. Then we're going to talk about silver in India. And you're going to be, you're going to be blown away. <laughs> I love Indian people. I don't like Indian food. No offense to anyone who's from India, and I eat any kind of food. I don't like Indian food, and I'm not real fond of some of the African food that I've had. Nonetheless, back on track, Phillips Baker, okay? Uh, he said, let's just repeat this. Asked about silver as a critical mineral, Baker pointed out that the EIA recently came out with a report saying that 75% of installed renewable energy in 2023 was silver. I'm sorry, solar. 75% of installed energy, renewable energy was solar, about 350 gigawatts, which implies almost 190 million ounces of silver. I got news for you guys. The mining sector, remember the, the silver miners? right, where there's no money going in, there's no money to be made right now, are going down, 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 down. The amount of money going into the silver mining sector, down, 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 
I, uh, we got 300 thumbs up. I will ring the bell. I got to finish. I got to stay on track. I ring the gong. Okay, the amount of silver being produced down, because there's no there's no money in silver mining. Down, down. Very few silver development companies. Very few silver exploration companies. Down, 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 down. The Silver Institute, right? We know there was a big deficit in silver the last few years. Thank you for that super chat. Wow. You guys, America first. <laughs> Thank you. We're glad you're here. You're a basement dweller daily, everybody. The amount of silver being produced, explored for, it's all going down, 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 down. To the point now where I think the miners are going to 800 million, 900 million. What's 100 million ounces of silver when you're a basement dweller? That's all they're making, though. The amount being demanded is going up, 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 up. See? Okay. All right. And in that 190 million ounces, that's like 25% of all the mine production in the world right now. Okay. Now, what I don't agree with Phillips Baker is him saying, we're going to go to Mexico. Uh, he may want to talk to some of the silver miners who've been working in Mexico over the last five years. Talk to America's gold and silver. Talk to uh, 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 Fortuna Silver. Talk to Equinox Gold. Anybody trying to run a gold or silver mine in Mexico, talk to Newmont. Was it Newmont, the Pasaquito mine? Just recently, I think they reopened it, but... Mexico is the world's biggest producer of silver, and it's becoming a, um, let's just say, challenge for a lot of companies to operate in Mexico, right? We won't even talk about the border crisis. Now, I got to ring the gong. And then, what was the last? Oh, India. Don't let me forget, okay? <laughs> Hold on. I'll be right back. You know what? I usually ring it three times for 300, but you guys have been so generous with these super chats, you get an extra ring. <laughs> it keeps ringing after you hit it. I'm not doing anything, and there's no echo on. I wonder, well, I won't do that. Someday I'll do that. Oh, that was a bad hit. Maybe that's too loud. I need to hold it back here. Is this better? <laughs> Maybe I should have been a gong player in the uh, symphony. I don't know. Let's talk about uh, our friend who gave us this awesome super chat and says he has uh, 2,000 ounces of silver. A two, I don't know. Whatever. It made me think of this. Like, India, the guys... <laughs> this is big news. This is breaking news part two when it comes to the silver and gold market, okay? India now has the biggest population in the world. I read that the other day. I guess they surpassed China, okay? Now, India has the biggest population, but they're both about 1.4 billion people. Just to give you context, America's like 300 million they're, they're like four times bigger, India alone, than the United States. They have... 25% of their population will be moving into adulthood within the next 10 years, okay? They're smart people, right? I got a lot of Indian neighbors. My kids go to school with Indian. I know their parents. They're very smart, successful, driven, hardworking people. The people in India are the same way. Their parents come over. I see them. I've, they're fun. They're nice. They're good people. They're very awesome people. But that's not what we're talking about. They love gold. They love silver. Did you know that Indian households have over 25,000 metric tons of gold hidden under their beds in their houses? Gold is part of their culture. 25,000 metric tons just happens to be over three times what the United States government has, supposedly, because we haven't seen it for like the last 70 years, or however long it's been, in Fart Knox, right? Okay. All right. India is a big deal. All those people are going to be getting are in their they're they're the opposite of the United States. All right. Because even though we're living in Bidenomics and it's working, it's great here. Right. For some reason, the middle class in the United States is shrinking. Oh, but guess what? The opposite's true in India. India has four times as many people, and their middle class is expanding. I would say probably. 50 times faster than ours is shrinking. And all those people that are now accumulating money for the first time, 
What do you think they're going to do with their money? Huh? Yeah, you got it. They're going to buy gold. They're going to buy silver. As a matter of fact, it's a known fact. And I've confirmed this with some Indian people from India. <laughs> that in India, it's common for grandparents to tell their grandchildren to hold the weight of their body in silver. Okay, that's how much silver that you should have. And then with gold, they say, just get as much as you can. <laughs> but I did the math and I figured that like if each the Indian people are generally fit and, you know, they all weigh 150 pounds on average, there's not enough silver in the world to satisfy that requirement by those Indian grandparents. But nonetheless, it just shows us in no uncertain terms, right? That this world we're moving in, it's the BRICS countries, Brazil, Rwanda, Rwanda, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, <coughs> Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, the biggest under the radar country in the world right now. Huh? Right? What's the other one? Egypt? Is it Egypt? <laughs> I don't know. United Arab Emirates? Right? Those are the 10 BRICS now? BRICS ICU? right? And 30 other countries, as they grow and become more powerful, we're going to see cataclysmic changes in the precious metals markets. I heard somebody say it last night. I was watching Chris Marcus. You know Chris Marcus from Arcadia Economics? I love Chris. He's the one that probably, one of the key people that years ago turned me on to silver and gold. Did I get another super chat? Middle class growing in China. Yeah, it's all the same thing about China. Thank you, Metal Seer. Brought up a great point, right? The middle class in China is also, I mean, we can just look at India alone, but China, same thing. So I, I'm, 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 I'm listening to Chris Marcus, Arcadia Economics. You guys, I'm sure have heard of Chris Marcus. He's interviewing this guy, Bill Holter. Bill's like the legit, the most legit, smart guy in the out there and he's been in the silver and gold market forever um oh he said something and i forgot my train of thought again darn oh yeah he said he said something that i never thought of he was like he's like if china and i would imagine with india as well wanted to get all the silver all the gold they they, they could they could like a drop in the bucket in terms of their wealth they could break the comex easily right they could absolutely easily break the comex okay so it'd be like a nuclear bomb going off in the metals market they could just come to the comex and say we're buying it all okay and you know with silver what's going on we're buying it all right i mean i mean do i we, i talk about it every day but it's worth repeating right the shanghai gold exchange huh yeah if you want to buy silver there okay Okay, Buttercup, you want to come buy some silver from the Chinese? Because our Shanghai Gold Exchange, we actually deal in physical metal. Actual physical metal backs up these contracts. Go imagine, right? It's gonna, But it's going to cost you $3 an ounce more for silver right now, or $250 or whatever it is. It fluctuates per ounce, okay, to buy it in China. In the world is starting to recognize these other markets for the metals, right? The Russia uh, is, um, and nobody talks about it anymore, and I don't really know, but the Moscow world standard, Putin himself said, he was like, we want new markets, new markets to have true price discovery for things like precious metals, for things like oil and other commodities, not this make-believe fantasy a uh, manipulated system that's been in place, right, by the by the by the countries that ruled the world over the last fifty years. Now, look, I'm I live in America. I'm an American, right? I I was a little boy in the 1976 bicentennial parade. Okay, I I I don't want bad things to happen for this country. Unfortunately, some of the decisions that have been made over the last decades have put us in a position that is very, very precarious right now, right? It's nothing about patriotism. I love Thomas Jefferson. I love Benjamin Franklin. I love Andrew Jackson. I love the guys that wrote the United States Constitution. And I got another question for you. I was reading something the other night. 
just just last night and I thought, what the heck is this? It was like some mainstream media or it was some some you know rep reporter, somebody was talking to somebody said, well, what are you one of those constitutionalists? Like it was bad that you believe in the US Constitution. I was like, what? Why how can they how can they be like saying that to somebody? Like it's a derogatory term that you believe in the I don't know, maybe there's something about constitutionalist. I really don't know, but I thought, how can you use the US Constitution as a derogatory type statement? I don't I don't get it. I mean, what has this world come to? The Constitution just laid out some basic rights for all American citizens, one of which uh, states a little something about silver and gold. We happen to know a few things about that. Look, this week we could get a big surprise from the Fed. It could be a big bad surprise for the silver and gold price. Be prepared, okay? I don't want to, all right? But it could also be a real good surprise for the silver and gold price, all right? Because... Because if we if we if we take a look at all the evidence out there, is the Fed giving us a major clue? Breaking news. I haven't heard anybody else talk about this. Okay, so now when you go to the country club later tonight, the club, you can talk to your friends and you could say, you don't have to quote me. You can just say, you know, I'm a little suspicious. Makes me say, hmm, makes me wonder what's going on that the Fed is going to end this bank bailout, this bank relief program. And don't forget, it's BTFP, not BTFD, uh, not PTSD, not BTF, it's BTFP. I always get it mixed up with buy the dip, that one. Anyway, I'm a little suspicious that the Fed's ending this relief program for the banks in light of the fact that we've got a oncoming missile, incoming missile in terms of the commercial real estate market, right? Right? Everybody now, and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but now you're probably hearing it, right? We, we, we get the news first here in the basement. This BlackRock building in New York that they paid $640 million for eight years ago, that now they're basically trying to sell for $150 million, like 25% of what they paid for it, that we've got this bomb coming at us with commercial real estate. And in the in the in the Fed, it makes you make us makes us wonder how could they be pulling this relief program? Does it mean that the Fed knows that they're going to be providing relief in another way, which is going to be <coughs> much lower interest rates, which will make the consumer real estate issue uh, much less impactful and the Treasury issue must much less? I mean, think we got to think about this, and doesn't it? absolutely makes sense to us. I think it does, right? So we could, you know, we could get hawkish rhetoric out of the Fed, right? They're not going to raise rates. If they raise rates, I quit. <laughs> but if they're hawkish, I'll be surprised. The only reason why they would be hawkish, which would be bad for silver and gold, is because the, the stock market bubble has reinflated. But that's like the only thing keeping this great Bidenomics economy going, right? Bidenomics is working. It's working, Joe. Yeah. Anyway, not a political show. Um, I think we're, I think we're, and we, and if we take a step back and look what they said to us, let's not forget, okay, they, Jerome promised us back in December that they were going to cut rates next year, right? So, it'll be interesting. Thanks for joining us, okay? Enjoy your day. Be nice to yourself, you deserve it, okay? Be nice to number one. If you start there, it'll be a lot easier to be nice to the people that are closest to you. You're a most important part of Ron's Basement. On behalf of Susie and I, thank you for being here. And uh, as long as I'm still alive, I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye.